All right. I welcome you to our ninth lesson in science. Circles is a section and the unit is life cycle of flowering plants. Life cycle of flowering plants. So specific objective. We should by the end of the lesson describe pollination as a stage of life cycle of flowering plants. We began this topic with arrangement of the seven main stages of life cycle plants and we touch on flowering as the first stage. Today we would like to talk about pollination. Pollination. No, this is not the first time of meeting the word pollination. What is pollination? A stage that follows flowering. All right, let's look at the definition together and see whether what you are thinking about is correct. We are saying that it is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a flower. So let's take note of that. The anther here is the part of the male reproductive part of the flower, while the stigma is of the female reproductive part of the flower. Now, we are saying that there are some agents or elements that bring about pollination, which include wind, insects, birds, even humans, and other mammals. Now, let us look at the types of pollination we have. The types refer to the distance the pollen grains travel. So we have self-pollination and cross-pollination. So we are going to look at self-pollination. And we say is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower. It's not two. So let's call this is of the same flower. Or another flower on the same plant. So let's take note. It's the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of the flower to the stigma of the same flower or another flower on the same plant. Now examples of crops that are self-pollinated or that undergo self-pollination are hibiscus, sunflower, mango, rose, orange, maize, flamboyant, and the rest. We have a lot of self-pollinated flowers. Now let's look at cross-pollination. Now cross-pollination is a transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower on a plant to the stigma of a flower on another plant of the same kind or species. So here we are referring to two different plants. One is a male plant and the other is a female plant. The male plant has a male flower and the female plant has a female flower and the two are separated but of the same kind. So examples of cross-pollinated plants are popo. As you can see we have male popo tree and female popo tree. The male popo tree do not bear fruits. The flowers are elongated. They have long stalks. And uh, the female one bear the fruits. Then we have date plants, date plants which are common in Arab countries. The tree looks like a palm tree. Then we have apples, pumpkin, etc. They all undergo cross pollination. Now, we are now going to look at difference between insect pollinated flowers and wind pollinated flowers. Difference between insect 
pollinated flowers and wind pollinated flowers. You need to know the differences clearly. So you can see the picture. The picture on the left is uh, insect pollinated flowers or flower, also known as entomophilus. Entomophilus. E N T A P H I L O U S. Entomophilus flower. And then we have wind pollinated flower on the right. And it's also known as anemophilus flower. A N E P H I L O U S. Now we have large varieties of insect pollinated flowers, including uh, harvest corms, flamboyant, rose plant, uh, morning glory, etc. We have a lot of them. But when it comes to the wind pollin pollinated flowers, we have plants of the grass family. Also, oh, all grasses are pollinated by wind. Their flowers are not really that clear or colored. Then we talk of cereal crops like maize, millets, rice, they are all falling under wind pollinated plants. Okay, okay now let's look at the difference between insect pollinated flower and wind pollinated flower. Good. One, we said the flower is large and conspicuous. So it has large conspicuous flower. The word conspicuous means clear or can be seen easily. And then wind pollinated flower has small inconspicuous flower. The flower cannot be seen easily. It's small. Two, insect pollinated flowers are usually scented. So usually scented. Wind pollinated flowers are not scented. Three, nectar is present. Nectar is a sugary liquid found at the base of the plant that insects are attracted to. Insects like bees, butterfly, and the rest. But with wind pollinated flowers, there's no nectar presence. Again, the stigma of wind uh, insect pollinated flowers are sticky or gluey. But that of the um, wind pollinated flower is feathery. Of course, the pollen grains of insect pollinated flower are few but heavy. But pollen grains of wind pollinated flowers are many but light in weight. And of course, as the name suggests, wind pollinated flowers are pollinated by the wind and insect pollinated flowers are pollinated by insects. These are some few differences between insect pollinated flower and wind pollinated flower. Today, my dear learners, we touch on the second stage of life cycle of flower plants known as pollination. Look at the meaning of pollination and I'll move on to look at types of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. With self-pollination, there's movement of or transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower or of another flower on the same plant. But cross-pollination involves transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower on one plant to the stigma of flower on another plant. Then we finally touch on the difference between insect pollinated flowers and wind pollinated flowers. All right, for assignment 19, we are supposed to answer all the questions. And number one, distinguish between self pollination and cross pollination, and give two examples each of self pollinated flower and cross pollinated flower. Two, identify five differences between insect pollinated flower and wind pollinated flower using tables. I wish you the best and hope to see you 
next week. The scores will soon be uploaded. So check by the close of this weekend. Till we meet again. Bye bye.